Today on Premiere Prep, we cover the basics to motion tracking inside of Blender. Hello film worlders, it's me your host Micah Pendleton and welcome to Premiere Prep. Today we continue our beginner's guide to using Blender for visual effects for part 3, motion tracking. Before you can start you need to understand what motion tracking is. It's where you take a rock, throw it and then calculate how fast it traveled. Gotcha. No, it's exactly as the name would lead you to believe. It is the tracking of movement within an object or of an object that you define within your software. For our example, this is the footage I will use. I chose this example for a variety of reasons. One, it's a great way to get to know the motion tracker. And you get to know one of the most versatile tracking tools, plane tracking. It allows you to do screen replacements on TVs, cell phones, and computers, and you can do things like add bullet holes to walls, do billboard replacements, and I could go on naming many more. For this tutorial, we will not be going into how to prep a shot for motion tracking or anything like that. We'll just be sticking within Blender. This will just be to get you started using the motion tracking tools that Blender has to offer. Now, let's jump into Blender. To get to the motion tracker, go to the editor type menu and select the movie clip editor. This is the motion tracker. Once there, drag and drop your video onto the workspace. Now we will basically just jump straight into tracking. Find a spot on what you want to track that is very distinctive. It needs to be as easy as possible for Blender to track. On my example, I placed markers on the TV. To add a tracker, hold down control and left click on the spot you want to track. Now you have your marker. Many people will go in depth explaining additional things that you can adjust for the marker, but 90% of the time, the default settings work perfectly fine for me. Now we track. Press Ctrl T and Blender will start tracking forward. If you tracked a good spot, it will go all the way through and be done. But sometimes, you'll find your marker drift off and you need to correct it. Just drag it back into place. Then you can use the arrow keys and continue to go back and forth between the last frame and the current frame and reposition the marker until it's exactly where it was, then press Ctrl T again to continue the track forward. Now if you play through from beginning to end and the track looks good, you have success. If your track does the thing where it bumps away for a frame or two, just grab it and reposition it and Blender will automatically add a keyframe. Now continue to track the other needed positions. That's basically it for just adding a marker and tracking a spot, but how do you actually use this data? Well, let's start with plane tracking. This is perfect for when doing something like this TV example. To create a plane track, go to the Solve tab on the side menu and under Plane Track, select Create Plane Track. This will then add a repositional box around your markers. Now position it on where you want your image. For me, it's the TV. You can also do a preview with your image there but the way you add it is a little stupid. So go to the UV image editor and drag and drop your image directly into there. Now go back to the movie clip editor and go to the plane track submenu on the right hand side panel and where it says image, click on the image you just imported. This is just to preview the plane track. It will not render with the image. To get the image into the render, we'll be going to the node compositor and setting up a scene like I showed how to do in part one. Now import your footage and your image. Make sure that you have the correct number of frames and everything. Combine them with an alpha over node. Now with shift A, open up the node menu and under distort, select plane track deform node. Now define the video you tracked, the camera, and select your plane track. I also prefer to add motion blur to help sell the effect. Now it's all set up and ready for fine tuning, which is for a future episode. So you can render it out and get this. And then after some fine tuning, you can get 
this. Another use for motion tracking is image stabilization. And I showed how to do that a few weeks ago, which you can watch here. You can also track your camera's movement and add CG objects into your scene, but we won't be going into that today. It's bigger stuff like that needs its own episode. That wraps it up for part three. I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable inside of Blender's motion tracker. For part four, I'll be going over the basics to green screening and the color tools in Blender's compositor. This Tuesday is a new episode of Filmworld Community and I'll be giving details to a contest. So make sure you check back for that. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember, dream as big as you want, but pay small in smart ways. I'll catch you next time.